So we're here at the example table, and in this video we're going to be talking about absolute and conditional convergence. So as a little motivator, let's note this remark here. The alternating harmonic series, right, the series negative 1 to the n over n, converges, but the harmonic series, just the sum of 1 over n, diverges. Now also note that I've, I haven't written any limits uh, here under or above these sigmas because we don't really care where we start. Yes, the harmonic series starts at n equals 1, but the divergence isn't determined by where we start. So sometimes I'm going to omit these limits. Alternating version converges. The non-alternating version diverges. So this motivates a definition. A series for which this sum, so we take all the a sub n's, and we, put, uh, we take their absolute values, and a series uh, a sub n for which the absolute value of a sub n converges, is absolutely convergent. A convergent series a sub n for which the absolute value of a sub n diverges is conditionally convergent. So one example of something that is conditionally convergent is the alternating harmonic series because it itself converges but when you take the absolute value of all the terms you get the harmonic series which diverges. Let's take a look at another example. The series 1, uh, negative 1 to the n over n squared. This is absolutely convergent. It's convergent because it satisfies the conditions of the alternating series test. But it's also absolutely convergent because if we take the absolute value, we get 1 over n squared. And that's a p-series where p equals 2. And that converges. So this is, all, um, is absolutely convergent. And there's a very nice theorem that we can make use of. If a series is absolutely convergent, so if this series converges, then the original series, just with the a sub n's, also converges. Uh, that's supposed to say converges. Now, this brings up a very important point. Something can't be both conditionally convergent and absolutely convergent. First, because if this thing converges, then if the sum of the absolute values converges, then the sum of the original terms converges. But also, we define conditional convergence to mean that this series diverges. So something can be absolutely convergent, it can be conditionally convergent, but it cannot be both. If something is absolutely convergent, then it's also convergent. That's what this theorem says. But it's not conditionally convergent. So let's take a, a look at an example where this theorem comes in particularly handy. And we'll mention all the various theorems that we use along the way to show that a particular series converges. So let's examine the series sine of n over e to the n. Now this series has terms that are both positive and negative, but they don't follow a particularly nice pattern because sine of evaluated at integers isn't very well behaved. So you're going to have some positive terms, some negative terms, some positive terms, you, but you're not going to have positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. So you can't use, in particular, you can't use the alternating series test on this thing. However, sine is bounded uh, between negative 1 and 1. So you should think that this should behave something like 1 over e to the n, at least as far as convergence versus divergence goes. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to compare this to that series. So since the absolute value of sine of n is less than or equal to 1, the absolute value of sine of n over e to the n is less than or equal to 1 over e to the n. This series converges, so the, su the sum of uh, 1 over e to the n converges, 
And this you can show by the integral test. So since this thing converges by the comparison test, the series absolute value of sine n over e to the n also converges. Finally, by the previous theorem, the original series sine of n over e to the n converges. So one thing to note, we can't apply uh, the comparison test to the original series because the original series doesn't have strictly positive terms. It has some positive, some negative. So we have to look at the series that we force to have all positive terms by taking the absolute value. And then we can use the, the comparison test to show that it converges and the previous theorem to show that the original series converges.